Hi everybody, it's Chris from SparkFun. Uh, we've got another project for you today. Um, but first, um, a lot of you are asking to see a clip of the sign from last time, the Do Nothing sign in action. Uh, so here it is. It was a great hit at Burning Man and it got plenty dirty and beat up, but it lasted the whole week and uh, it was a great sign for my camp. But today, I'd like to talk about uh, capacitive sensing. The idea to do capacitive sensing for the video came to me uh, because a friend of mine wants to paint his walls in his house with either conductive paint or use copper tape or some conductive material so that he can control his lights and his stereo and anything uh, electronic uh, by touching different parts of the walls. Capacitive sensing, uh, for our intentions, is detecting when the capacitance of an element in a circuit has changed. In this case, I'm going to touch something, change the capacitance of that thing, and be able to detect that. What I've got here is uh, Arduino Pro Mini uh, with an FDDI basic for programming and power, connected to this board with three different conductive materials, copper tape cut into three widths. I've got conductive ink painted on in three widths and a hunk of sheet metal. By touching these, I change the capacitance of uh, the element with my body. It's detecting the, my body's capacitance. And it's a very simple circuit. The signal line comes out of one digital pin of the Arduino, goes into a resistor, comes out of the resistor, goes to the tape or whatever capacitive element I have here, and then back into a different digital pin of the Arduino. And I've got a special library loaded up onto the Arduino to detect when the capacitance of these, these elements changes. But you can see that when I touch one of these elements, the LED will light up. The reason I have multiple different elements is because I wanted to test in real life, not just in theory, how well these would react, how quickly they would react, so that when my friend puts it on his wall, he has a proof of concept to go off of. The difficult part of capacitance, capacitive sensing is how it works. What is going on here? We can't just connect something conductive to a resistor and a digital I.O. pin and have it detect on or off. There may be a small change in an analog voltage if I were to connect a, a voltage to it, but that's not very robust and there's a better way to do it. So this is the circuit that we're dealing with. We've got the Pro Mini and two digital lines uh, connected to this resistor loop with a one mega ohm resistor which is connected at one point to a capacitor, our capacitor being the conductive element in our case. Even though that conductive element is only connected at one point on this, on this loop, it still introduces a capacitance that changes when you touch it. This can't be detected by just detecting a, a, volt, a change in voltage. Um, you actually have to detect the change in capacitance. Sensing the change in capacitance on this line is not as easy as sensing the toggle of, of a high-low state. And so the code running on this Pro Mini uh, is the capacitive sense library written by Paul Badger, uh, which is on the Arduino Playground. It's, uh, it's a great library and it's really easy to use. It takes one of these digital pins and makes it the send pin. And then it takes the other digital pin, makes it the receive pin. One is an output, one is an input. It needs to detect a change in this capacitance. The only way to really do that is measure the time in between when this line goes high and then this line goes high afterwards. You send pin 10 high to five volts, this resistor capacitor pair here creates a delay in between when pin 10 goes high and then when pin 11 reads high. What the library does, or what the, f the function does, is sends 10 high and then waits and counts. It waits until it sees 11 goes high. It takes that number and returns a time value. You can then use that time value to see if it has changed. If it has gone up or down, you know that there has been a change in this capacitance because when there's more capacitance, the longer it will take for pin 11 to go high. Uh, when there's less, the less time it'll take for pin 11 to go high. So you find what is a normal state and then check for changes each time that pin 10 toggles. If you were to look at the waveform created by the send pin on an oscilloscope, it would look like this. Five volts back down to zero, five volts back down to zero really quickly. So if you zoom in to one of the 
five volt changes on this waveform, it looks like this. So this blue line represents our, a change in our send pin. It is sending the voltage on that resistor and the capacitor to five volts. But the voltage across the resistor and the capacitor does not immediately go to five volts. The resistor and capacitor create what's known as uh, RC delay. This is the equation for exponential decay that it's based off of. The thing is, the voltage across the resistor and capacitor, the voltage that is received on the receive pin, does not go straight to five volts like the send pin. The resistor and capacitor create a delay. The capacitor has to charge up to five volts and that takes time and it creates this value tau. Uh, tau is resistance time ca times capacitance. So the higher the resistance or the higher the capacitance, the longer it's going to take to charge up. So when the send pin goes high, the, the, receive, the voltage across the resistor and capacitor, the receive pin, represented by this red line, goes up to five volts, but it takes a while. If here, this is five volts, then a little bit lower than five volts would be the voltage required by the at mega uh, to detect a high voltage. At 2.5, it might be detecting a low voltage, it might be detecting a high. Let's say this is the threshold for detecting a high voltage. What the library does is it sends the send pin high and the capacitor starts charging and the whole time, in this, in this stretch of time here, the, the function is counting. It's counting the time it is, it is taking uh, before the, the voltage on the receive pin has gone high. It's counting, it's counting, it's counting, and when the voltage on the receive pin finally hits the threshold voltage for, to, to, for the Atmega to detect a high voltage, it stops counting and spits out tau. It spits out that time constant. When you touch the capacitor, you increase the capacitance. The resistance always stays the same, but you increase the capacitance, therefore increasing tau. So when you touch it, this curve stretches out. The send pin always sends the same voltage, but the curve stretches out. So now instead of quickly coming up this way, it rises slower and takes a longer time to hit that threshold voltage. So now instead of going from T0 and T1 and this value getting returned, it goes from T0 to let's call this T2 and this value gets returned. That's a larger value and in your code you can detect if this time has gone up therefore detecting a change in capacitance and toggling a light. And for those of you that are interested, the Wikipedia page on this is great. Just go look up um, RC circuit or uh, RC time constant and you can find this, which is the equation for ex exponential decay of an RC circuit. Um, and you can actually see and predict what the voltage is going to be based on your resistance and capacitance. If you watch the voltage change on an oscilloscope, you can actually derive the capacitance that of, your, of the element that you're trying to measure. So to demonstrate the rise time of the RC circuit, uh, I've got my rig hooked up to an oscilloscope um, and we're probing the receive pin on the large copper pad here. And you can see on the oscilloscope that every time I touch this, the rise of the voltage on that receive pin uh, stretches. It takes a little bit longer time and the more I touch it the longer it gets so it will actually stretch outside of the scope of, of my oscilloscope. So this is the curve that you were seeing on the whiteboard earlier. This is the voltage on the receive pin of the Arduino. Thanks for watching Engineering Roundtable. I uh, hope you learned some more about capacitive sensing. Uh, the code for this project will be posted along with the video and be sure to check us back in two weeks for another Engineering Roundtable episode.